guys, I just finished editing the video. Um, I left a comment down below linking to all the most important aspects of the video because I rambled on a bit too much. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoy it. Peace out. Hey everybody, my name is Chris Stevenson. I've been drumming for about 16 years now and I'm currently endorsed by Mapex Drums, Los Cabos Drumsticks, Remo Percussion, and Maratural Cymbals. And I'm gonna tell you how it happened. So when I was 12 years old, I was living in Germany uh, as a military brat, um, part of a military family. And um, I was inspired originally by the power of influence. My brother started playing guitar and he had been playing guitar for about two years before I started even getting into music. So I picked up the guitar and I absolutely hated it. One time he brought a drummer over earlier, he started playing in a band with another uh, drummer. They kind of started this thing. They're, we were all in middle school, so they started a band together. It was this dude named Dan, and he had a um, just this drum kit in my brother's room. I remember walking up the stairs and going into my brother's room. And Brian had been playing guitar for about two years at that point, and I just saw him jamming with that guy. And when I looked at the drums, I had butterflies in my stomach. Like when you when when you're 12 years old and you have a crush on a girl, you know. I just I had that feeling. I knew I had to learn drums. So I remember going to my brother and I was like, all right, dude, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to kick your drummer out of the band. You know, like, it's my time, I I'm gonna do this. So naturally my older brother goes, all right, well, I'm gonna lock you downstairs in the basement until you've learned Iron Man by Black Sabbath, there is smell Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana, and I think Seven Nation Army by The White Stripes. And my brother said, as soon as you've learned those songs, you're in my band. And the, the guy's drum kit was still at the house and I would go and practice every single day and I made it happen. I learned those songs maybe in about a month. So anyways, my brother Brian had introduced me to bands like Pantera and Metallica. When I talk about the power of influence, it was also the fact that I was watching these drummers and I fell in love with Vinnie Paul and I fell in love with Lars Ulrich and they were using certain brands, you know, drum brands. And I went to my parents and I was like, I want this drum kit. I want these cymbals, I want these sticks, I want these drum skins. And then next thing you know it, I get all of that. And then I see in other videos that they actually weren't sponsored at the time. They were just using that gear in old videos. Anyways, yeah, so I wanted the, the gear I saw in the next video. So I was a 12 year old kid that was inspired by the power of influence. My dreams came true at the age of 18 because um, I had been slugging it out in all the local Ottawa bars and in Toronto as well. You know, we, we would travel to Toronto and that was a really big deal for us. So um, my brother and I had another band at that point. It, it was called Aggressor. It was like a thrash metal band where a bunch of kids playing thrash metal. And anyways, um, we would be opening up for some of these bigger bands, you know, the ones that we looked up to in, in the Toronto scene, the Ottawa scene. And when I was 18 years old, fresh out of high school, I'd already put a lot of time. I can safely say at that time I had been putting over 10,000 hours into my drumming between the ages of 12 and 18 because during high school, I'm not suggesting this kids don't skip school, but I knew what I wanted. So I was barely at school. I was just practicing my drums and learning the records that inspired me. So when I was 18 years old, fresh out of high school, one of those bigger bands from the local scene, Cauldron, they we had opened up for them before. So they saw that I was a good drummer. They actually wrote, can we steal your drummer, but S-T-E-E-L, you know, like heavy metal. Anyways, only metal people get that. But they called me up and we hit the road on like a seven week North American tour. It was actually called the Nightmare Tour and it was a nightmare. It was like the most unorganized, you know, playing in front of five people a night kind of a tour. We went on tour with a band called Enforcer. They're kind of like the Swedish speed metal kings. And so it was Cauldron Enforcer. I was fresh out of high school at 18. Yeah, we just slugged it out on the road, you know, like 12 guys in the back of a van. And I was already hungry for the road. And that's where I gained, you know, just my first experience. So after we um, did the Nightmare Tour, uh, we did another North American tour with a band called Municipal Waste. It was really interesting because I walked into a local music store at the time. And I walked in there and I was looking for just a big bundle of sticks. And I remember talking to the guy there and, uh, and I was mentioning like, oh, you know, I, I'm doing this really long tour, um, you know, and it's a much bigger deal. It's with a band called Municipal Waste. And he's like, all right, well, let me check out the dates. I'll see how many shows you're playing. Like you're, you might go through a pair night or blah, blah, blah. Anyways, once he saw the tour I was doing, he goes, man, I'll put you in touch with a company out of uh, New Brunswick uh, called Los Cabos Drumsticks. He put me in touch with them and 
Not only did I get in early, but it was a new Canadian company um, and it's a family owned business. And they literally became family to myself and my brother and my my actual family. So that was like, my that was my first endorsement ever. And it was a really cool feeling because the guy at the music store could tell I was doing a major tour and I was only 18 years old still. So I had actually fallen into the whole touring cycle and my first endorsement by the age of 18. So not only was Lost Cabos Drumsticks uh, my very first endorsement at the age of 18, they recognized me as being a touring musician, which was really cool. Um, I didn't expect them being my family. You know, it's not only, I didn't expect that from endor an endorsement. You know, I, um, I've basically grown up with them uh, in the music scene, so it's quite special for me. So from there, I toured the world with uh, Cauldron, um, mainly in Europe and North America. So after touring their first album, um, I was then asked to record their sophomore album. It's called Burning Fortune. So this was a very unique experience for me because I had already toured and I gained quite a bit of touring experience within like a year and a half to two years. Um, but we were in a professional studio where a record company was, you know, financing the album. There was a lot on stake, you know, like uh, just in terms of, um, sorry, I don't know if you say that there's a lot on stake, no. But anyways, um, a lot at stake. Yeah, so there was a lot at stake um, with this album. We recorded the album Burning Fortune and that ended up getting nominated for a Juno. Um, so not only had I started touring and then I was uh, now recording in a professional studio with all this pressure around me, but um, I learned a lot from that recording experience, which as a drummer um, really, you know, it brought me to a new level. I had now the touring and recording experience professionally. Anyways, following my experience with Cauldron, which was really cool, I got a call from a band called Skull Fist out of Toronto, and we used to play shows with them as well. So that's where the snowball effect really happened when it came to playing music with other bands. So they saw that I was a good drummer playing with this band Cauldron, and they had asked me to do their Japanese tour. So I got called like a week before their tour, and I'd learned 12 songs, and I jammed with them like night and day. We just went over the set time and time again and I, I was learning their songs kind of at the same time um, as rehearsing with them so that was a really cool experience because there was a there was pressure in terms of okay we have to fly to Japan in a week and you need, need to learn our set so that's kind of the same type of story with Skull Fist you know I toured with them and then I recorded their sophomore album as well which was again nominated for a Juno which was super cool so after all this professional touring and recording experience and that is another main point is the experience you know i did all of these tours and recordings for free just to get out there to gain the experience i was a young guy and i was super hungry to get on the road and just play this is where the endorsements started coming along because i put all of that time and effort not only into my instrument when i was a teenager and continuously after that but with the tour experience and the recording experience and just my desire to be out there with bands and to play music let me tell you something it's not all about the money it doesn't matter what age you're at if you really want something you got to do it 110 percent it's your reputation on the line and you have to enjoy what you're doing so this brings me to my next point about endorsements so i was at my uh local music store long and mcquaid so lost cabos drumsticks were now distributed by long mcquaid which was a big deal for them because for you americans watching that's like guitar center in the u.s so i got a call from the manager pat finn at one of the local long mcquaid's and he was just mentioning to me hey chris with all your tours coming up i know that mapex and remo are looking for uh, some Canadian drummers that are busy and at that time my brother and I we had gone through the whole thrash metal experience and you know playing in other bands we said to ourselves let's stop playing in all these other bands we have the experience now let's focus on our own band so we started a band called Old James and we had a lot of tours coming up with Old James and I was at the local music store and Pat Finn was mentioning that Mapex and Remo were looking for um, some drummers that were busy and I had a lot coming up with Old James at the time and this was my band so I was that much you know more involved with everything coming up and anyway so he sent me um he just put me in touch with the reps uh for mapex drums and remo percussion and even though he put me in touch with these companies i had to go through the formal process of you know submitting an application and what i did is i did not wait as soon as he put me in touch with those guys they're extremely busy 
and I put together a very professional EPK of all the professional photos that were taken anywhere in the world. I had to contact photographers. I was asking bands for, you know, like stems for recordings and you name it, just anything I could get my hands on that I was a part of. And I put that on an EPK, all the albums that I had played for, the Juno nominations, the Ottawa Citizen article about me when I was 18. And um, I had uh, just compiled everything into an EPK, including all the tours I had done in the past. So with that EPK, I sent it to those guys and I went through the uh, formal you know, application process. It's forms and they go through everything that you've sent in the EPK. And luckily I got the endorsements. That's awesome, you know, but that doesn't mean anything. Once you get an endorsement, the work is on you at that point. You can't just say, okay, I have an endorsement. I'm going to get free stuff. I'm going to, you know, be famous because they're going to advertise me all over the place. They want to see you putting in the work because you have a discount on their products. The most important aspect of this is not only advertising their products in music videos, when you're in the studio on all of your social medias, um, to show them that you really do care about the product. But before you do apply to any of these companies, you need to ensure that you already believe in their product and that you absolutely love their product. Symbols. So symbols for all of us drummers, that's the one thing that becomes like this unreachable endorsement. Later on in my uh, drumming career, you know, maybe about five years after I was already, I already had a Lost Cabos drumstick endorsement, I had a drum skin endorsement and a drum endorsement, I was only missing the symbol endorsement. It was actually, and I was approached by other companies, but I didn't settle for anything because I knew that I didn't truly believe in their brand. You know, I didn't want to just have a discount on symbols. I wanted to be part of a family, a family that I truly believe in. So it wasn't until I saw some other local players that were um, being endorsed by a company called Marat Jarrell Symbols. I gave them a call. I showed how interested I was, and I put together another. Um, more contemporary EPK, what I was currently up to and what was coming up for me. And I was actually at Sneaky D's in Toronto, eating a like burro favorito, a vegan burro, and I get a call from Marat Rail Symbols. And so I was like, oh my God, they're probably gonna tell me that I didn't get the endorsement because they're calling so soon. And they called me and they were telling me how impressed they were with all of my experience from the past, including the fact that I already had endorsements and I was pushing those brands already. So Marat Drill offered me the endorsement. Everybody is different with how they get there, but the one thing that stays true to any musician out there is the relationship you have with your endorsements. So the relationship being be a good person and also promote the products that you do have because it's a symbiotic relationship. If you use their brands and you are loyal to their brands and you promote their brands on absolutely everything you're doing, they will do the same for you. Trust me. Relationships are the most important aspect and I'm happy to say that with all of my reps and all of the endorsements I do have, they're like family to me as well. And they will continue to be as long as I'm done. Four key points with what I've spoken about. Number one, influence. Be influenced by the bigger players that are out there. Number two, dreams. Dream big, dream absolutely enormous. And don't be afraid to be turned down. If you are turned down, just work harder. Third point, experience. So if you are truly passionate about you know drumming or just being a musician, do stuff for free. It's not all about the money. And just get out there and work 110% all of the time. Even if you miss your bed while you're slugging it out in the back of the van on tour, for two months, just know that you have to give it 100%, 100% of the time. And the fourth point, the most important point that transcends absolutely everybody and everything is relationships. Maintain amazing relationships, not because you have to, but because, because you truly care about the brands that you're representing. So that about wraps it up, guys. If you haven't already, subscribe. Please give me a like and drop a comment in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time. And last thing, big shout out to all my sponsors. I love you guys so much. Marat Drill Cymbals, Los Cabos Drumsticks, Mapex Drums, and Remo Percussion. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I love you. Oh,